Spanish Tercios, the feared soldier of the Spanish Empire. Rarely has an infantry been as fearsome and iconic as the military unit formed in the 16th century. Their conduct, lifestyle and combat are faintly reminiscent of the Spartan soldiers of ancient Greece. They have been widely regarded as the elite soldiers of the Spanish Empire that dominated the old continent during the period from the 16th to the 19th century. In fact, they have been a key piece in the political movements of the Spanish rulers who were well aware of the fighting capacity of their men, as well as the reputation they had throughout Europe. That is why today we will talk about the Spanish Tercios, the most feared army in Europe. Stay until the end to learn about their incredible history full of exploits and portrayals. Let's begin. Birth of the Spanish Tercios. It is easier to give a context to the previous events that led to the creation of the tertiary unit than to define exactly and precisely the day of its birth. In this first case, we must remember the figure of Gonzalo Fernandez de Cordoba, who was baptized as the great captain. He not only played a fundamental role in the victories of the Catholic kings he served, but his enormous vision and strategic capacity led him to reinvent the development of the combats of the time. He restructured his army, giving preponderance again to the infantry and put it to work together with the cavalry. In addition, the artillery had been modified thanks to the appearance of an experienced corps of arquebusiers. The men in command of Fernandez de Cordoba had enormous respect for him, since they highlighted him as an admirable man who motivated his entire platoon and who was able to establish a code of morals and honour that the soldiers respected, almost like a divine commandment. It is believed that it's because of this army and its countless victories that King Charles I reorganised his entire militia to give birth to the Tercios Viejos unit. There was no exact year for this, but the first written document detailing this unit is in the 1536 Ordinance of Genoa where instructions are given about the form of pay the soldiers were to receive. Moral Code Any form of government would like to have an army that puts its rulers almost on a par with a divine figure and professes absolute loyalty to them. This is exactly what characterised the Tercios. The strict code of morals that the great captain had previously initiated had spread almost like holy writ among the Tertians. They possessed a total fidelity to the crown and to the Catholic religion. They fought for each other as if their own lives depended on it, since leaving a comrade to die in combat without having done everything possible to rescue him was taken almost as an act of excommunication and was a cause of dishonour and shame for the soldiers. If you had that passion for combat and mutual service, an unparalleled battlefield experience, you get a perfect army. And this was the case with the Tercios. For unlike many of the armies of the time, the Tercios possessed enormous combat experience and followed exemplary training. At that time, it was very common for peasants to enlist as the behest of the crown, or to do so only for pay. So they did not have the idiosyncrasy that a fighting force needed. But the case of the Tercios was totally different. They were true professionals with a devastating capacity in combat. They used to organize themselves very quickly in combat because they had an independent command in each detachment. Commanders who had full authority to make important decisions without the need to constantly wait for orders from their superiors. This made them unpredictable for their enemies who followed the traditional chain of command that slowed down the development of combat. Armament In addition, the Tercios were experts in the handling of firearms and melee weapons. Reasons that made them transcend in history and for which they're probably known by the common denominator of the people. They were able to adopt this innovative combination of attack, 
alternating between their weapons according to the situation. This incredible versatility made them very fearsome because they could adapt to any situation and take on any battle no matter how lost it was. As for their weapons, they preferred to use the pike, the arquebus, a sword and a dagger or stiletto. In every advance, the soldiers charged against the enemies to the cry of Santiago y Tierra España, a cry that made them stand out and intimidated the enemy soldiers. Uniform. At the beginning, they used only generic military clothing, which was provided by the army itself, or they made it themselves with their own pay. In the reign of Charles II, this changed, and the units of each province had different coloured uniforms. Red for the Madrid Tercios, purple for the Seville Tercios, blue for Toledo, yellow for Burgo, and green for the Cordoba Tercios. The uniform consisted of high stockings, shoes, shirt, dress and tie. They were issued at the ports of embarkation and had to pay for them in three or four instalments that were deducted from their pay. Depending on the area, they could also wear hats or hoods, as well as breeches and doublets. Combat Style In combat, the Tercios performed as follows. They formed an indivisible core that constantly held its position and tried to cover every space in the distribution of each unit. In the front rank were the muskets, firearms that had an enormous destructive capacity thanks to their power and long range. These weapons were used to destroy the enemy ranks and the arquebusiers could easily avoid the advance of the front and the enemy flank. After this, the enemy would attempt a stampede with their cavalry. It is at that moment that the Tercios would affirm the pikes on the ground, so they would stop the cavalry charge in its tracks and begin to mow them down with their swords. This magnificent display on the battlefields always gave them the victory quickly. They would also make a night attack on the night camps to take advantage of their vulnerability. These attacks were usually carried out to sow chaos and to dismantle and loot enemy supplies. These attacks were known as encamisadas, as the Tercios wore white shirts to differentiate themselves from the enemy. Disbandment and Legacy Like almost everything in life, the Tercios had a beginning and an end. Many indicate this end in the Battle of Rogroy. Conflict occurred on May 19th, 1643, that confronted the French army and the Spanish army. The battle lasted approximately six hours and ended in victory for the French, who had a great numerical superiority. Despite this numerical difference, the Perseus began the battle by overpowering the French, but the commander in command, Francisco de Mello, did not consider it a good idea to take advantage to adopt an offensive posture and mow down the French. Many indicate that this was the reason for the defeat, as the French were able to reorganize and turn the battle around. The end result left the unit devastated, as they lost many experienced men, and the Spanish Empire was already losing an enormous supremacy they had previously achieved. Although the Tercios participated and won in other battles, the loss of a large part of the unit's leadership was a hard blow that ended in the dissolution of the unit on September 28th, 1704, at which time Philip V transformed the Tercios into a centrally commanded regiment. Nowadays, there are several units of the Spanish armed forces that still keep the name of Tercios, a name that was once given due to its three main combat units, pikemen, arquebusiers and musketeers. For some years now, there has been a Spanish association that seeks to obtain a national holiday to commemorate the legendary Tercios. I hope you like this explanatory video about one of the most feared soldiers that existed throughout history. I encourage you to write in the comments what other soldiers you would like to see on the channel. Don't close the video yet. Before you go, Please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us grow and keep making much more content.
Now, without further ado, we bid you farewell.